What, what, Dr. Spotfire 2020? I hope you guys are ready for a whole new year of great content. I know I am. And viewers, I gotta say, 2020s, I expect this decade to be very big for analytics, machine learning, and AI. We really saw in the last decade a lot of companies, a lot of organizations starting to grapple AI, start to use it in their business operations. In this decade, it's really going mainstream. I'm glad you guys are watching because here at TIBCO, we're here to help you on this journey. And on that note, I want to point out that we just recently introduced Python natively into Spotfire 10.7. If you guys didn't catch it already, go ahead and look at this week's Dr. Spotfire webinar. And uh, in that 30 minute session, I go over how to use the new Python data function. Okay, so for today's quick tip, I'm going to show different tips for using scatter plots in Spotfire. I was going through Reddit and I saw on the Spotfire subreddit this post from CR7Fan who was asking for interesting ways to use scatter plots. First of all, thanks CR7Fan for the shout out. We're glad you're liking the videos. And uh, I got a special surprise for you today because just this week I was creating some different scatter plots and I think it's great to show the community. So for today, I'm gonna to be using this dashboard. We did this for Roger Craig. He's a Pro Bowl NFL running back that works for TIPCO, uh, and he's a Hall of Fame finalist for this year. So we put together this dashboard to support his run for the Hall of Fame. And uh, in this, I created some different scatter plots. Um, I have uh, different receiving and rushing stats. Um, I also have some normalized data um, across uh, different metrics. And uh, I have some data on you know, running back since 1950. Now, I'm going to put this dashboard, it's actually a public link, I'm going to put that link in the video description, and if you want, you can actually download it and play with it yourself. You go to File and just download as DXP file. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the tip for today. So on the left here, I've removed all the styling, and I'm going to go through it piece by piece on how I made it look like this one chart on the right. So. I have on my y-axis, I have career rushing yards, or sorry, career receiving yards, and on my x-axis, I have rushing yards. Now, there's a lot of overlapping points here, um, showing two dimensions. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is actually size this by the wins. So I'm just gonna type in wins here, and I wanna do this by the total wins. Uh, this is for each running back um, that's played in the NFL since 1950. And you can see that there's lots of overlapping points here. Um, so one thing that you can do is you can go into appearance and transparency, um, and this kind of helps you see where there's clusters of points. You can see where they're overlapping. Another way you can do this is by going into shape, and you can change the shape for all of these into a hollow circle. And again, you can see where all of the points are overlapping. So that gives you a better view of your data distribution. Now, while I have a good view of all the running backs, I really wanna emphasize how Roger did compared to them, as well as how he did compared to Hall of Famers. So in my data set, I actually have a column HOF for Hall of Famers. And this data set has two values, yes and no, for whether or not the player is in the Hall of Fame. And I created a new calculated column called labeled, HOF labeled. And in this calculated column, I use a case statement that when the name of the player is Roger Craig, then use the text Roger Craig. If HOF is yes, then make it Hall of Famer. And if HOF is no, make it other backs. So I'm gonna use this to separate out my data visually here by going into my color by and using HOF labeled. Okay, so now we clearly see Roger here, we see the Hall of Famers, and we see all the other running backs. Now, the problem is that these points overlap with each other. Um, so, you know, we could use transparency, but what I did in this case is I actually use drawing order, and I really think drawing order might be underappreciated as a valuable way to represent different uh, marker points and scatter plots. Um, and what this is, is, is it's exactly what it says, it's drawing order. The number, uh, the value that's in the drawing order column is the, the order of the points that are drawn. So if I want, um, let's say, the Hall of Famers to be drawn on the top, 
Um, I, you know, I, I could use, uh, I could make a calculated column and uh, rank them in a certain way, but I can also just use an expression here. I'm going to use if and then hof. If that is equal to yes, then make it one, otherwise zero. And I'll hit enter. Now what just happened is all of these red points, which are Hall of Famers, are drawn on the top. And there are a lot of non-Hall of Famers here. So people might not initially think about using white on white, but I really want to emphasize certain data, and so this allows me to see the other data points as kind of a reference, but keep the Hall of Famers on here. Um, so here, I'm going to just pick a color from the screen, and I just pulled this color, these colors initially from a San Francisco 49ers logo. Uh, missed that there. Let me just pull that there. Okay. So now we can clearly see where Roger is compared to all of the other data points. The other thing I did is I went to lines and curves and I added a vertical line and a horizontal line at the specific values which are Roger's receiving yards and his rushing yards. So I'll turn these on for you to see. And I made it very faint, I made it very subtle. Um, you know, you don't really, you know, if you're trying to emphasize something and you emphasize everything, you're kind of emphasizing nothing. And to create a reference point, a reference line, it's okay if it's kind of faded. People will see it, they'll notice it, and that can help their eyes kind of focus towards the real data, the real story you're trying to tell. And here, um, because I have these lines, you're better, e you're better able to see that there's only two running backs that did better than Roger in terms of receiving and rushing yards. Um, you can really clearly see where he uh, ranks across them by looking at these quadrants. So that might be something to consider if you're trying to focus on a specific value in your scatter plot. So scatter plots can be good when you're looking at two numerical measures, one on the x-axis, one on the y-axis. Um, but as you start getting into more dimensions that you want to look at, um, you can use like maybe a 3D scatter plot for three dimensions, but what do you do when you get to four or five or six? Uh, and that's what a parallel coordinate plot is for. It's good for higher dimensional uh, analysis. So over here we have a parallel coordinate plot that's looking at total yards, total touchdowns, total receptions, and total wins. And you can see that this axis is changing depending on what I'm selecting. Um, so that's showing um, and if I, if I select this again, it'll, it'll hide that. But this is showing across like a percentage, um, how Roger did here in the red um, on each of these four dimensions. But each of these have a different scale to them. So what I need to do is normalize this. And in Spotfire, uh, I have an option for normalization as a transformation. And what I can do is add each of these four dimensions in here and I can scale them between zero and one. So if the highest number of yards is 12,000 yards, that will get one, and if the lowest number of yards is maybe 50 yards, that will get zero, and the whole distribution will get scaled between zero and one with uh, decimal values between. Um, and I can do that across all four of these different, uh, these different dimensions, and I can get a zero to one value for all four of them, which kind of puts them all in the same scale. That's normalization. So I've done that and I have here, um, I have Hall of Famers on one trellis and non-Hall of Famers on another trellis and I'm using that normalization on my x-axis. And here we can see across non-Hall of Famers, Roger is ranking the highest across all four of these dimensions and he's right among the Hall of Famer pack. So how did I create this visualization? I'm gonna start from scratch here. And to do this, I'm going to create a uh, scatter plot from scratch. Um, I've also created another calculated column called all metrics, where I've aggregated across those four normalized values, and um, I've brought them all together so you can kind of get a sense of how each player is across all four metrics. So I'll hit OK here. Um, I'm going to put all of those metrics, uh, I'm going to put them on my x-axis. Now if I take out the column on my y-axis, then it's going to be totally blank. But what I can do is just put in any fixed value, I'm going to just put in zero here, and that's going to line everything up. 
Now, this is nice. Um, this is nice, but there's still a lot of overlapping values here. So what I'm going to do is size these by total wins. Okay, now we can see it a little bit better, but still very uh, overlapped. And I really just want to compare non-Hall of Famers to Hall of Famers. So here, um, I'm going to trellis this uh, by my Hall of Famers. So here, I'm going to trellis this um, by my Hall of Famers and non-Hall of Famers. Um, and now that this is trellised, I can see Roger clearly over here, the other Hall of Famers there. Um, it's quite small, so I'm going to change the sizing. And I'm just going to increase the sizing a little bit there. And the other thing is the drawing order. So um, here in drawing order, there's none. But what you want to do is actually have your smaller circles on top of your larger circles if you can, so the larger circles don't um, obscure the smaller ones. So for this, I'm going to do total wins. Now that's putting the higher ones on the top. I'm going to reverse this. Now I can see the lower ones uh, behind it. And here I can go through and I can continue to format. I can turn off the x-axis selector to turn off that zero. Um, I can kind of style this up. And that's how I created this chart here, which you can clearly again see Roger amongst the Hall of Famers. Now let's take a quick look at this last chart. And here I'm showing all running backs um, since uh, 1950. And there is really, there's just so many points here that let me show you what would happen um, if I left this as solid and I went to colors and I left this, um, you know, maybe as white. Um, this is how the other charts were and it's just so busy, I can't really see what's going on. So what I decided to do here is, um, you know, if you do like a lighter gray or something, then that's also very busy, but you can change the shape of just those values. So I did uh, shape by this column, Hall of Fame label that I calculated, and I made just the other uh, backs, I made those um, a lighter, or I made those a hollow circle, and this way I can see, and I can also kind of play with this, I can go to more colors, I can kind of move this around a little bit, and I just want them to be a reference in the background. So now I'm focused on Hall of Famers. I can see how Roger's doing, but I also get kind of a, a tertiary view, a third level of view um, into how he's doing across all the running backs. Um, and this is also a good example to show you how jittering might work. If you wanted to use jittering, you're seeing this across um, each individual incremental year. Um, you could use jittering for something like this as well uh, to reduce the overlapping values. But I thought that was too busy. I like the way this looks, so that's the way I left it. And one thing I like about this visualization is you can see that in the era where Roger Craig started in the NFL, uh, the amount of receiving yards for running backs went up. Uh, he was really transformational in the game, changing how the game was played, and it really affected how the game was played by other Hall of Famers, other running backs for the next few decades. So if you want to support Roger in his Hall of Fame run, you can tweet with hashtag HOF or tweet with hashtag HOF2020. Um, there's also a link to a petition you can sign, which is in this DXP, in this dashboard. I'm going to put a link for the dashboard itself right into the video description as well as to the petition. Thanks for joining today, guys, and we'll catch you next time.